In the 2019 AP Statistics FRQ exam, question number four was one of the toughest ones, but it should have been. It was really, really easy. It was all about a test of significance between two proportions. Let's dive into it and walk through exactly how to do it. Tumbleweed, a commonly found in the Western United States, is the dried structure of certain plants that are blown by the wind. Cochia, a type of plant that turns into tumbleweed at the end of the summer, is a problem for farmers because it takes nutrients away from soil that would otherwise go to more beneficial plants. Okay, great. A lot of information there. Scientists are concerned that cochia plants are becoming resistant to the most commonly used herbicide, glyphosate. I don't even know how to say that. All right, so essentially we have this idea that cochia plants create tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is a bad thing for farmers. So what do they try to do? They try to use a herbicide to present, prevent cochilla from growing. That way they don't become tumbleweed and get annoying to farmers. So but they're noticing a problem. Cochilla plants are actually becoming less resistant to the herbicide used to stop them. So in 2014, a sample was done where 19.7% of 61 randomly selected cochilla plants were found to be resistant. Oh my gosh. In 2017, another sample of 38.5% of cochia plants in a sample of 52 were found to be resistant to, the, to this new herbicide glyphosate. Does the data provide convincing evidence at the 5% significance level that there has been an increase in the proportion of all cochia plants that are resistant to glyphosate? Glyphosate, I can't say it. All right, now here's the deal. 2014, 19.7%. 2017, 38.5%. There has definitely been an increase between our two samples, but does that mean there is an increase in the actual population of cochia plants, right? Or is this just, hey, you know, we, we had a sample in 2014, we had a sample in 2017, oh my gosh, they were different, crazy, samples vary. Or does this actually tell us that there has been a legit increase in the proportions. All right, let's find out. Now, what we have to do is run a test here. We have to determine if this difference, so let's look at the proportion from 2017 minus the proportion from 2014, that's 0.385 minus 0.197. Don't be afraid to grab a calculator if you need to, 0.385 minus 0.197. That's a difference of 18.8%, 0.188. Okay, is that such a change that we could officially say that the proportion in 2017 of cochia plants that are, that are resistant to this herbicide that's going to help out farmers, is it very large? Is it definitely increased? All right, so essentially this is going to be a significance test. So there are four steps to any significance test in my book. Now the AP kind of kind of puts um, steps two and three together and they call that one step, but it doesn't matter. You, you could break this down to 19 steps if you wanted. I like to look at four steps. Name the test in context and write the hypothesis. Check the conditions and build a sampling distribution on the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct. Find the test statistic for your sample and the corresponding p-value. Use that p-value to make an appropriate conclusion. Those are the four steps I'm going to walk you through right now to get this problem 100% correct. So first, there are clearly two samples, two independent samples, a sample from 2014 that had nothing to do with a sample from 2017. So this is a two-sample Z test for the difference, now here comes the context, between the population proportion of resistant cochia plants in 2014 and the population proportion of resistant cochia plants in 2017. So when we're grading this, we're looking that you have the name, a two sample Z test for the difference, but don't just say the difference between two proportions, you gotta actually name those proportions. The population proportion of resistant cochia plants in 2014 versus the population proportion of resistant cochia plants in 2017. The other thing that they like to look for is that you're using the word population proportion because we want it to be known that a test is used to make a judgment about a population proportion and we're going to make that judgment with some samples but we're essentially looking at what could be true for the population. So they like to see that word population. 
Now for the hypotheses, you actually have two options. It's one or the other. It's whatever you want. The null is that nope, no difference. The true proportion from 2017 exactly equal to the pr true proportion of cochlea plants that are resistant in 2014. No difference whatsoever. Against an alternative of yes, there is a difference. There, the 2017 is definitely greater than the proportion back in 2014. Now, the other option is actually simply just doing algebra. If we just subtract the 2014 over, basically our null would be that the difference between them, because I did use the word difference here, so sometimes it's nice to actually see a minus sign. The difference between these two proportions is zero. There is no difference. They're equal, right? Those are one in the same sentence. Versus an alternative that the difference is greater than zero. Because if I'm doing 2017 proportion minus 2014 proportion, and I'm looking for 2017 to be bigger, that's going to produce a greater, a value greater than zero, which is of course a positive. So as long as 2017 is bigger and I subtract 2014, I'm going to get a positive number greater than zero. So either one of these sets of hypotheses is totally fine with me and pretty good, pretty awesome. Just make sure that you have a very well-written description of what you're trying to do that has that context in it. All right, now step two is building that sampling distribution. Of course, I have to check my conditions. Both samples are random to avoid bias and they're independent samples. That is super important, especially when you're working with two samples. They gotta be independent of each other. The sample size of 61 and 52 are both assumed to be less than 10% of all cochia plants to assume independence during those years. I'm assuming there's lots of them. So in both years, we're under 10%. means we, get, we got pretty big populations. And in 2014, the sample 61 plants had approximately 12 that were resistant. I took 61% and I multiplied it by the, excuse me, I took 61 plants. I multiplied it by the 19.7 that were resistant in 2014. And that's how I got about 12. And that means the remaining 49 were not resistant. Or actually, they would be resistant. The 12 that were resistant. Sorry for mixing that up. And the point is, both of those numbers are 10 or larger. In 2017, I had 52 plants. And remember, of those 52 plants, uh, 0 0.385 or 38.5% of them were resistant. That's approximately 20, which means that 32 were not. And again, both of those numbers are larger than 10, so the normal model can be used. All right, now this next part is going to take a second to explain, especially if you weren't taught this beautifully in your class. First is the center of my sampling distribution. I do have to assume that the null is correct and that there is no difference. So that would mean that if I were to look at all possible sample differences between 2017 and 2014, that the mean of them all would be zero. Yeah, sometimes you're going to get a positive difference if 2017 is bigger. Sometimes you might get a negative difference if 2014 is bigger. But if there truly is no difference, I should have a beautiful zero in the center. Because again, remember I said that they were equal. Equal means a difference of zero. Now, here's where you could potentially have two different things. Both would be fully correct on the AP exam. We could have our standard error. Now, remember, standard error is because we don't know the true proportions. I have no idea what the true population proportion was back in 2014 or in 2017. All I have is my sample data. So if I use the 2014 data, which is 0.197 and the opposite, 0.803, sample size 61, and the 2017 data, 0.385 was my sample proportion, 0.615 was the opposite of that, and then my sample size is 52. Again, this is the twin brother of standard deviation, but because I don't know the true proportions in each year, I'm using my p-hats, I get a standard error of 0.0845. Totally a fine value to use. But some teachers tell their kids to pull. Now, this is what's going to take me a hot second to explain. If the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is that there really is no difference. 2017, 2014, the difference between the proportions of cochia plants that are resistant in both of those years is really zero. Then why even list them separately? Why even, what does it even matter about 14 verse 17? Why don't we just pull them together and put all of my successes together and both of my samples together? So that produces what we call P hat pooled. This is putting all samples together, 61 plus 52. That is going to be my denominator. Uh, that means that if there's no difference, I have 113 total samples and I have my total successes. So this is the approximate 12 that were resistant back in 2014, 0.197 times 61, and the 20 
the 0.385 times the 52 that were resistance back in 2017. So if I add up all those successes, divide by the 113 total Cochia plants that I analyzed, I get a pulled value of 0.284. Why am I doing this? Because the null hypothesis is that there's no difference. If there's no difference, just put them all together, right? They're all the same. And then the standard error pooled is using that same number twice. So notice for 2014, I'm using the 0.284 and its opposite 0.716 with the 61 back in 2014. And then in 2017, I'm also using the 0.284 and the 0.716 divided by the 52. Again, why am I doing this? Because our null is that there's no difference. If there's no difference, put them all together, which means what I see in 2014 should be the same as what I see in 2017. Now, when I do this, notice I get a standard error pooled of 0.0851. The difference between my two standard errors, whether I pull or don't pull, are almost the same. They're only off by a little bit. That's why at the end of the day, it does not matter if you do this or don't. So you could use a standard error unpooled or standard error pooled, and you're going to end up with such similar data at the end that it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to show along through this problem the results if you pull versus don't pull. But again, However your teacher taught you is fine, but it actually doesn't matter for the AP exam. We'll get full credit to either one. Now, step three is my work. First, I'm identifying the two proportions from 2017 to 2014, which means I observed that 0.188 difference. Is that difference significant? Well, first I got to find my Z-score. So I take that difference and I subtract zero, because remember the null was that there was no difference, and I divide by my standard error. Here I'm dividing by the standard error unpooled. Here I'm dividing by the standard error that was pulled. So those are those two values that I got earlier. Now notice the z-score if you don't pull is 2.224 and if you do pull 2.209. We're looking at a very small difference between those z-scores. To two decimals this is 2.22. To two decimals this is 2.21. Again it's just not that big of a difference which is why if you forget to pull or you for, don't even know about it, who cares? All right, now the p-value is the probability that any other difference between a sample from 17 and a sample from 14 is greater, more extreme than mine. Mine was a positive difference, so I'm looking even greater. That's a z-score greater than the 2.224, and I got a p-value of 0 0.0131. And if you pull, you get very similar values. Your proportion that you're looking for is still the same, that any other sample difference is greater than ours. The Z scores again a little bit different because I use a slightly different standard error, but I get a very, I get a, a P value that's about the same. So regardless of the P values, they're both very, very same, about 1%. That means that of all possible samples, 1% are going to be at the difference I saw of 18.8% or even higher. Now, those are both low P values, and the question did ask to use a level of significance of 5%. So since the P value of 0.03, 131, even if you use the other p-value, 0.0136, it's still less than 0.05, so I will reject the null hypothesis. Now i got to give all of that awesome context. There is statistically significant evidence to say that the population proportion of cochia plants in 2017 that have become resistant to glyphosate is higher than the population proportion of cochia plants in 2014 that were resistant to glyphosate. So again, three parts to this conclusion. First part, comparing your p-value to your alpha. Second part, understanding that because it's below alpha, I'm going to reject the null. And then don't forget all this context. Make sure you're talking about the population proportion in 2017 is definitely higher than the population proportion in 2014. But don't just use blanket words like proportion. Talk about the proportion of cochia plants that are resistant to glyphosate really use, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, really use the words of the problem to make a proper conclusion. So many kids just say, I reject the null, there's a difference. No context, you're going to lose credit for that. Now, this is actually not required, but I did it anyway because I'm a, I'm a suck up. This is a little bit extra, right? Farmers have it correct to be concerned that due to the cochia plants being more resistant to the herbicide, it would cause more cochia plants to grow, which in turn would cause damage to the soil by using up important nutrients. Because that's what the problem actually talked about. The fact that the farmers use a herbicide, glossophosate, to stop these cochia plants from turning into tumbleweed because tumbleweed hurts their fields, hurts their soil. 
And they were using the phos the glyphosate to try to prevent this, but obviously it's growing or the, the, the plants are, are, you know, theory of uh, evolution here, the, the plants are becoming less resistant, uh, meaning that more of them are not resistant. And basically the farmers have a problem on their hands. So pretty important to the farmers, this would actually matter. So pretty cool problem. At the end of the day, it's dealing with proportions. Go back and rewind and watch a little bit slowly if you need to. I know there's a little bit weird going on there with that pulled versus unpulled, but hopefully that was taught to you well. And there's a video here I'm about to show you in the corner here if you'd like to learn more about what all that means. All right, stay tuned. See you later.